was that one? Oh, hi. Welcome to The Film Addict Show. I am your host, The Film Addict. The 80s. The 80s was a time of Ronald Reagan and Cold War and great American patriotism. Now, there were a lot of action movies made in the 1980s. You were you had the famous Rocky movies, you had the famous uh, Rambo movies, all um, a good portion of Arnold Schwarzenegger's movies were made in the 80s, um, including the first Terminator. So, uh, and so during the 80s, the, those were basically the two biggest action stars of the time was Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone. Um, but there were also, I think, two, I believe there were two other very great action movie stars that were, that didn't get, that made a lot of movies, but didn't get, like, the box office praise that they deserved. One being Jean-Claude Van Damme, and the other being Dolph Lundgren. Dolph Lundgren is the central, is the person I want to talk about today. Born in Sweden, and, um portrayed in many action movies as a Russian because I guess because of the blonde hair and his huge physique makes him good to play a good Russian. Now he was uh, he's been in a lot of a lot of action movies and since has become you know has basically developed a cult following um, as a result of those action movies as people today rediscover them and go wow Dolph Lundgren um, he got, he was mostly, he was mostly famous back then as playing Drago, the, uh, Russian boxer in Rocky IV with Sylvester Stallone. And then we have, so, yeah, Dolph Lundgren. And then we have Jack Abramoff. Now, if you do not know who Jack Abramoff is, he was pro probably, like, whatever stereotype you have of Jewish people, he was that stereotype. He was um, pretty much a money-grubbing, you know, guy or whatever. He's, he was the, the poster child for the stereotype of, of the Jewish people. He was a famous lobbyist um, who basically laundered a whole bunch of money by uh, making land deals with Indians, Native Americans, that is, and cheating them out of their, out of their contracts and making a crap ton, a shit ton of dough out of them. Uh, made a lot of money off of them, and for his crimes, is went to jail. He was a famous lobbyist on Washington, on Washington Hill, knew a bunch of pl powerful political figures, but he was also a man in the film business. He was he often played the producer. He loved movies. He was a huge movie a huge movie fanatic like myself. So he went out and decided to make a, to make a couple movies. And I found one of those movies. You don't, you can't really find them anymore. But I found one of them. It, one of them is called Red Scorpion, starring Dolph Lundgren of all people. This, and actually, I have to admit, it's not that bad. Um, it, for an '80s movie, it was actually pretty well done. It had every uh, typical '80s. It, it had the. It had the right ingredients for a good '80s action flick. You had uh, you had Dolph Lundgren, one of the one of the biggest action stars of his time. You had him playing a Russian. You had a Cold War you had a Cold War era style movie. Um, tons of explosions, lots of guns, so lots of action too, and very little very little important dialogue. So. It was mainly just like, you know, ah, Russians are bad. But, I mean, I would think this would be like an American propaganda film, which were a lot of the 80s action movies back then about the Cold War, and that, he, that you know, America is awesome, and that the Russians are terrible. Now, while it doesn't necessarily say that, give the, uh, the America is awesome propaganda, um, but, I mean, it definitely showed the Russian aspect of it um, at... It shows the Russians as, you know, cold, heartless killing machines. And so, we, Dolph Lundgren in this movie plays uh, a, a special Spetnaz agent who is, sent, who is sent on a mission in, uh, in Africa to 
find to find and locate um, the friend of a of a political rebel leader uh, of the rebellion in Africa and uh, befriend him and then locate uh, locate the leader and kill them both. That's the main ob objection or that's the main objective and he you know follows it greatly so or he follow he follow he tr he wants to follow through he wants to impress his country he wants to impress the generals so he goes to the camp and he purposefully gets himself uh locked in jail for insubord for a disorderly conduct and subordination and um <laughs> But, like, the way he does it, though, is kind of funny because he just drinks a bunch of vodka, Russians, um, and goes into a bar and just picks a fight with just anybody, and then, take and then like, grabs a gun and, like, shoots the bar and everything. It was pretty fucking cool. And then he gets thrown in jail, and we have the, the second-in-command military, the second-in-command rebel leader, and an American journalist who cannot stop cursing for some reason. Just keeps on swearing. He's like, fuck this, fuck that, motherfucker, ass. You know, he just keeps cursing. He's like, oh, you fucking Rus you fucking Ruski. Keeps calling him a Ruski. He doesn't trust him. Um, so, and they manage to plan an escape, and he helps them. And he, he's undercover, so he has to help, he helps them escape. And comes, uh, starts becoming, you know, friends with them. And I, it's not... Actually, I thought it would be very typical. I kind of predicted that it would be a very typical storyline, where uh, when he he's at when he uh, joins when he joins the rebellion, he starts seeing the error of his country's ways, and then he would just change his mind. No, that's not exactly what happens, and it kind of steers the other way a little bit. Um, he's still very committed to sp to uh, to his country, Mother Russia. Uh, they are going through the African desert. They make a cool escape, um, cool action scenes with the escape, and um, he. They come to the rebel to the rebel camp, and they keep him. In, they have to keep him in jail because you know, safety. You know, we don't know who this guy is or what his what he's really thinking. So it's just safer for all of us. And that was actually very understandable. It didn't seem unnecessary. It was, it seemed very necessary. Like I would have done the same thing if I was in that situation. So they throw him in jail and then he is just like uh, speaking in Russian, just like, I will defend my country with dignity and honor, dignity and honor. And he's like punching his jail cell and he actually makes dents in his cell, which is pretty funny. And then he goes, God, guard, can I have a band-aid? And he's just like, can I have a band-aid? And he's just like, T I mean, and I'm, that seemed kind of ridiculous to ask because, like, why would a guard, like, carry a band-aid around with him? Um, I don't know, but the guard falls for it, and then he just grabs him and just beats him against the cell, and I guess he knocks him out, or I guess he kills him, I don't know. Um, but he takes... Like, he's sneaking around the camp. He's going to kill the leader and the second-in-command guy. And he fails. Like, they catch him because they they kind of predicted that he would do this. Um, and they uh, abandon him for his comrades to find him. And they uh, they take him as a deserter. Because, and... Or no, they don't really take him much as a deserter, but he did fail his mission. So I guess in Russia they have to like execute prisoner uh, failures because failure is not an option. Um, and there's a great torture scene when uh, he's in chains, you know, all he's just like all sweaty and everything, and he, they're just like you're Spetnaz, and he goes, I am Spetnaz, and um, they give him to the Cubans and. They have like these metal, uh, metal spike rods or whatever, and he's sticking them in in him. I think they're actually sticking metal, um, metal spikes into Dolph Lundgren, and I'm just like, ooh, ooh, that's fun. And then, uh, and then he chokes the torturer to death, and then he escapes and he goes through the desert, and he's walking through the desert, and then 
they're trying to find him. They don't find him. He's like, and then he befriends a native, like a like a tribal man, a native of the land, befriends him, and takes him. Like they're traveling together, and they uh, uh, they go back to to the tribal man's village, and he spends the night with them. And they like after having a time together, they developed a, f a friendship kind of. And he, like, sears a scorpion into Dolph Lundgren's chest, hence the title Red Scorpion. And then they go, then they are hunting, and then they come back and they find that the village has been wiped out by the, uh, by the Russian helicopters um, for sprinkling, like, poison gas uh, onto the people. And so af he realizes, like, the evil... Like, you can see that he... The evil... He realizes the evil that his country is doing. Like, he actually has uh, an epiphany that um, they are the oppressors. They are the bad guys. And he doesn't want to be the bad guy. But... And the only thing that was really cliche about this movie is when uh, uh, he, he stands... Like, they're sitting together, and then he's like, you have the muck of the hunter now. And then he takes his dog tags, and then rips them off, and he's just like, ah, and throws them, like, I am in defiance of of the natural order of my country, or whatever. So it's kind of, it was very cliche, um, but I think it was bad. Like, it's cliche now, but I think it wasn't that cliche back then to have that moment where he, you just take something and then you just deny everything and throw it up, throw it, like, you know, in defiance of everything that you believe in. I think that was, like, um, that wasn't much of a cliche back then, but it's a total cliche now. So, we have that. And then he, um, like, he run. And then the rush at and at the same time the Russians find the rebel camp, and they're uh, shooting the hell out of it and blowing shit up. Lots of explosions, lots of explosions because it's an '80s movie, and so Dolph Lundgren is re like is in nothing but like, he's basically in underwear. He's basically in underwear running around with a spear, and he goes back to the rebel camp, and then he, uh, they have a funeral for the leader who gets killed within the like, during the, um, attack, and then, they're like, what, they're like, we must give up, what are we gonna do, D and then Dolph Lundgren does the coolest thing in the entire movie, he, like, a guy's offering back his spear, and then he takes the rifle and just goes, let's go kick some ass, I was like, whoa, that was awesome, oh my god, Dolph Lundgren, that is badass. And so, the, and then, like, the next scene is just an immediate, like, full frontal assault on the Russian, Russian slash Cuban base. And he's just, like, in freaking camo, and his face is, like, camo and everything, and he's got a handkerchief on, and he's wearing a green vest and short shorts, and he has, like, a machine gun, and he's just, like, <sighs> they were just, like, shooting everybody, and it was, like, fucking crazy. And then, like... And then he goes into the main headquarters, and then, like, um, then the Cuban leader has, like, a grenade, and he pulls the, he pulls the pin, and then Dolph Lundgren just shoots his arm off, and his arm is still on, his hand is still on the fucking thing, so it won't explode. And I was like, whoa, that is totally unrealistic, but this is an awesome movie, so I don't care! Um, and then... Like, he and, the, he and the American, like, Dolph Lundgren and the American journalists become friends again. They're helping each other out and everything. And then, like, and then they kill a tank together. And then, uh, and then, like, he, ha he takes a machine gun. He's walking towards a helicopter where the Russian general is trying to escape. And he just goes, you told me that we were fighting oppression. But I did. But I only found out that we were the oppressors. I was like, really, no shit. And he's like, I am not like you. And then he turns away, not killing the guy after shooting his helicopter. And then the Russian general is about takes out his pistol and he's about to shoot Dolph Lundgren. And then he just quickly turns around, shoots the helicopter, and it explodes. And they're just like, damn, Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> and then, um, and then they're walking away, and then he. 
And he's like, yeah. The American Joe's is like, fuck yeah. And then he goes, what do you think? And Duffer is just like, fucking A. And that's it. That's the last line of the movie. It's just the fucking A. They're walking off together. Dolph Lundgren with a machine gun. Freeze frame it. And then we roll credits. This movie it was actually not that bad. It was actually very entertaining. Um, for an 80s movie, it was very entertaining. Uh, not that, not much dialogue in this movie. Um, that could be worth anything, but it didn't matter. It really doesn't matter. I mean, when it, you're in an action movie, dialogue doesn't matter. It's all about the explosions. It's all about the fighting. It's all about, you know, badass motherfuckers just shooting shit, shooting and blowing shit up. That's all it's, that's all this movie's about. And it does it well, I think. It doesn't fall into the, um, traditional action movie like of the eighties, it has a great. It actually has a pretty good storyline, um, and it has not that bad of a character development. Only for the Dolph Lundgren character, not much for uh, for um, for any other character. I mean, they only focus on Dolph Lundgren's character development, which I guess is all right. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Um, but holy shit! Like, I, I suggest if, like, if you can find this movie, I found this movie on YouTube and I downloaded it. I say go find it. Um, if you're a huge Dolph Lundgren fan, I highly recommend this movie because it is one of, it is, you know, it's a Dolph Lundgren movie. Um, I mean, you got Dolph Lundgren there, bare-chested, sweaty or oiled up or whatnot. I mean, what more could you ask for for Dolph Lundgren, you know? Um, so... I say watch this movie. It's fun. I mean, it's weird because it was produced by Jack Abramoff, who goes on to be one of the most notorious lobbyists in American history, one of the sleaziest lobbyists in America's history. But you know, his time in Hollywood, not a not that bad of a time apparently. So, um, go watch this movie. It's fun. It's entertaining. Uh, and know that little fun fact about Jack Abramoff. And, um, enjoy Dolph Lundgren. He is badass. He's a badass motherfucker in this movie. Um, so, just go see this movie. It's awesome. Or, or find this movie, watch it, and just enjoy it. I mean, I think Dolph Lundgren probably was one of the better action movies out of, you know, the fame, out of the four horsemen of action movie stars. Um, or actually five action movie stars. I forgot to mention Steven Seagal, but whatever. Um... <laughs> But, uh, yeah, entertaining movie for action movies. Yes, I give it, a, I give it a good, I give it a passing. Um, don't take this movie seriously, though. You don't have to take this movie seriously. So, that's me. I, that's it. That was Red Scorpion. I am the film addict, and until next time.